And with that, Mr. Walker. Your Honor, the people would like to first invite uh, Jim Matthews to address the court. Thank you. <clears throat> Judge, would you like him at the podium, or where would you like Mr. Matthews? Wherever they're comfortable, but the podium is fine if that's where he wishes. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Matthews. Good afternoon. Judge Kearns, if I had the opportunity to address the defendant, this is what I'd say. For the past two years, you, Steve Pankey, have been in jail for the murder of our daughter, Janelle. You've been free for almost 35 years without paying for this crime. This crime has haunted our family all these years. But as these two trials have shown, you have been obsessed with your actions and your conscience could not let you forget. You have been a prisoner in your own mind. You've claimed to be a Christian on many occasions. We've heard about your church attendance, heard you quote scripture, and seen a Bible in your home. However, there are two major components that are reflected in the life of a Christian. One is head knowledge of God and his son, and the second is heart knowledge of Jesus and his father. The manifestation of this heart knowledge comes from, a loving, comes from loving your neighbor as yourself. But all we've heard is that in, in these two trials is you hating the police, you hating the people at Sunnyview Church, even the pastor, and you've even transferred this hate to people you didn't even know. In, in that incident in the ambulance. But there's still hope for you. It is not too late to confess your sins, which is the first step to your forgiveness. The second step is to repent or turn away from your evil ways. If you do this, God is faithful and full of grace and mercy to truly forgive you. The gates of heaven can still be open to you, and you can escape from eternal hell or damnation. It's up to you, and it's not too late, Steve Pankey. God is waiting. Thank you, Judge Kern. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Your Honor, the people would invite up Gloria Matthews. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mrs. Matthews. Thank you, Judge Kearns. <clears throat> if I had an opportunity to address the defendant, this is what I would say. So many thoughts go through my mind. Every time I hear Janelle, Janelle Matthews, as mom, I remember much. Yes, she's feisty. Yes, she's opinionated but she's also tender-hearted, sensitive, and loving. I cannot at this moment say that I forgive you, Steve Pankey. How you ended Janelle's life. God will forgive you. We all know that. But he's waiting for repentance and a heart that wants forgiveness. I hope in the days ahead you will hear and obey what God is telling you, and that his word will penetrate your heart. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Your Honor, our uh, last witness would be Jennifer Mogensen. I would invite her up at this time. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. 
Judge Kearns, I'd like to express my gratitude to you. Over the past two years, I've sat in your courtroom through pretrial motions, first, the first trial, and then again these past few weeks. Thank you for running your court with justice, integrity, fairness to both sides, and kindness. I prayed for a fair trial so that when it was over, there'd be no questions as to the ethics inside this courtroom, and I believe that occurred. To the jurors, man, my heart has gone out for you. You've had to sit for long hours, listen and process so much information, been away from your jobs and families, and I know it's been a long month for you. You listened intently, asked smart questions, and I thank you for your service. Lastly, my utmost gratitude to the Greeley Police Department from 1984 to the present and the Weld County District Attorney's Office. So many hours from dedicated professionals have gone into bringing justice for Janelle. The hours began on December 20th, 1984, and within the 37 and a half years to bring it to completion. So many have worked tirelessly. Detective Cash, Detective Prill, Mr. Rourke, Mr. Miller, Ms. Wells, Ms. Archibek, and Ms. White. There are no words to adequately describe how I feel, but just know my admiration and gratitude for you and your dedication to justice comes from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so very much. Judge, if I had an opportunity to address the defendant, this is what I'd say. It's an interesting process to try and put into words how the most painful event in my life impacted me. I can focus on the what ifs, the relationships that were not allowed to mature or even happen. I was not given the opportunity to move past the sibling rivalry relationship with Janelle and mature with her into adulthood. My husband never met his sister-in-law. My son never met his aunt. It's natural that I've mourned not having Janelle at graduations, my wedding, birth of my son, or even to share in the mundane day-to-day -day events of life. When you murdered Janelle on December 20th, 1984, you took this from me. I keep reflecting how parallel our lives have run as your life changed on December 20th, 1984 as well. My parents and I were thrown into a reality of moving forward while trying to find Janelle. You moved on as well, Consciously or subconsciously, but you were looking back, waiting to see if you'd get caught, if anyone would find out that you killed Janelle. My parents and I had to wait 12,634 days before we were gifted the information of knowing what had happened to Janelle. We received closure from Janelle being a missing person to now knowing she was a victim of homicide. This information opened new wounds, but we were grateful for knowledge and the ability to lay Janelle to rest. You learned of her remains being found too, and 35 years of cowardly hiding out, thinking her murder was behind you, your world was shaken. Again, my family moved forward through the judicial process, and you had to continue looking back over your shoulder for another 447 days, until that morning on October 12th, 2020, when you were arrested. And to use your words, your sin had found you out, and you couldn't outrun the consequences of murdering Janelle any longer. I've learned about you, the judicial system, and how the wheels of justice turn, fairly or not, in the year leading up to the first trial. Then we waited yet another year to begin this second trial. Receiving the guilty verdict today marks the end of our earthly justice journey for Janelle, but it's only the beginning of your journey of the accountability of the death of my sister. And there is one more day of accountability still yet to come. Only you and your God will be present for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your Honor, that concludes the evidence we have for the court's consideration this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Mr. Harris, Ms. Brazil, any statements or evidence on behalf of Mr. Pinky? Judge, we don't have anybody besides counsel who wants to make comments to the court. Very well, thank you. Mr. Burke. Your Honor, in cases like this, I always find it exceedingly difficult to find the right words after hearing about the impact that this has had on a uh, victim's family. 
Um, that is particularly true this afternoon when I listened to the words of a family who had searched for answers for almost 38 years. This court knows better than anyone the impact that this crime had on this community. This court can sit here today and see the courtroom packed with individuals who cared very deeply about this little girl and this particular case. Um, one year ago, almost one year ago to the day, I stood up in front of the jury, right, wrong, or indifferent, and said that the search for justice ends for Janelle today. I know I couldn't say that this time because of some recent case law, but it truly does end on this day. What I want to share with the court is something that um, will not be readily apparent to this court. After the verdict this morning, we had an opportunity to go back to my office, meet with the Matthews family, um, answer questions, and, and kind of prepare them for their comments today. But we also called Angela Hicks, and we also called Deb Moon. This is what they had to say. Angela Hicks says, I feel safe, not happy, not sad, but I feel safe. What an incredibly powerful statement that is from a woman who has come down and testified against her ex-husband twice. She finally feels safe. Prior to the second trial, we had called Ms. McDonald um, and asked her if she would be willing to participate should this court offer or allow the evidence of her victimization in this trial. And what she told us at that time, I think resonated with all five of us who were in the room at the time. She said, I feel that I am the Janelle Matthews that was able to get away. Let that sink in for a minute to think about what that woman has carried with her all these years um, and particularly coming and testifying on that stand about just a part of what had happened to her. Today, when we spoke to her, what she said to us was, it was such an honor to speak on behalf of Janelle. This court has but one sentence to impose, and I would suggest to you that it is truly the appropriate sentence for someone who has walked this earth for nearly 38 years knowing what he had done and escaping justice. Your Honor, today, justice truly ends for Janelle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Harris. Judge, Mr. Pankey, is, he raised two kids. Um, he lost a child. He's a religious man. I'm not in a position right now to say all the um, things that I think could be said, um, but I would ask for your honor to take into consideration him as a man, um, and we understand the court has to do what it has to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Mr. Pankey, you're not required to make a statement, but if you wish to, you're welcome to. Is there anything you'd like to say, sir? Yes, your honor. I, <clears throat> I am a Christian. I will be in heaven. I am innocent, and this is not justice for Janelle. Let me start out by saying this. The Matthews family, the Mogensen family, families of faith that have shown incredible grace, courage sitting through this trial, two trials. But even prior to that, from the information I have in terms of uh, dealing with A tragedy, um, it's unspeakable to think of the loss of a daughter and a sister, particularly in that manner, unknown answers for so long. You know who the who is, and you know the why. On behalf of the state of Colorado, you have our condolences and our hope. I don't know if closure is really the right word, but sense, sense, some sense of finality for your daughter and your sister.
I don't know what happens from here. I understand the appellate process will play itself out. Our jurors worked hard. And I commend them. Take care of a few formalities first, Mr. Work, with respect to restitution. Judge, at this point, I am not in the position to be able to address restitution. What I would like to be able to do is file a notice of restitution within 60 days with the, uh, with the uh, authorization of the court. Um, I know that there is going to be some, um, but I am not uh, ready to address the restitution issue today. Any objection to that procedure from the defense? If you can make a record regarding the nature of the restitution, I think that would be sufficient. I think largely the nature of the restitution would be uh, any funeral and burial expenses that the uh, Matthews incurred in the uh, burial of Janelle and perhaps any lost wages that were suffered as a result of being here. That would be the extent of it, I believe. I know that the timeline for restitution um, requests at sentencing have changed just a little bit. So I think that six days would give the defense enough time with 30 days if there's any objection. I'm, I'm going to have to short it up. And that's fine. I was going to say 60 days is probably too long. If the court would give me 30 days, I can comply that's with reasonable. getting something filed um, one way or another within 30 days. All right. I'll get 30 days for the people, 30 days for the defense. To be clear, the court is ordering restitution on today's date, the amount on which we determine at a later date. We'll have that hearing within 91 days of today's date if requested. Yes, sir. As to count four, court will close that count out with credit for time served. As to count three, that is merging with count two. Mr. Pankey, consistent with the authority and the statutory requirements at the time of the offense, the court is imposing life, the possibility of parole after 20 years. There is statutory fees and costs. Court will waive ADC fees. The court will presumably waive any further advisement regarding appeals. I understand he has counsel, and I presume that process will start. Your Honor, I, we did speak with Lindy Frolic, who indicated that the proper procedure would be for us to request um, for the court to appoint the public defender's office in Form of under Rule 12B, and um, we're happy to reach out to them as well, and I'm sure they can follow up with a written filing, and they'll do a conflict check. Check If there is still a conflict, then it'll come back to ADC. If there's not, it'll stay with the public defender's right, office. I will appoint the public defender's office for appellate purposes. Thank you. And is the court um, authorizing under 12B to proceed in form of progress? Yes. Thank you. It's been a long time. I heard what you said, Mr. Matthews. I'll be clear. I heard clearly what both of you said. And my condolences. Sentence of the court. Courts are recess. <laughs>